o'clock. The offense is going to start. I said, where the hell are we going? We're moving out. That's all they told us. We moved out. Next day, we heard the Battle of the Bulge is gone. They were in Bastogne. Right. Where we were, the Germans had everything pinpointed, they demolished with, the, with our artillery. And that was when we start actually fire. Firing the, 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 the weapons, the artillery. Now you man, did you, you man one of the cannons or? No, no, no. I was the artillery man. I took care, I was made uh, sergeant for ammunition chief. Okay. We were three of us. We had three batteries, one for each battery. And I had a battery. So I was always on the road because okay. the, they were shooting like they were shooting marbles. So now, so you were actually involved in the Battle of the Bulge now at this point. Uh, How long did this the Battle of the Bulge continue for? Well, it started in lengthy. January. Oh, maybe three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly, but I remember when we didn't even know that the Baston was on the fire. It was four, five o'clock in the afternoon, almost dark. They sent me up to give it ammunition because the guns were almost dry. Mm -hmm. When I got up there, I could see German going into Bastogne. And I had to go across this open field. I said, my God, all they got to do, turn around and shoot me outside. Yeah. So I sent one truck at a time across this field. I said, just keep going, go west. I couldn't get, I could see Everything was at flames. The three dumps we had in there, the road blowing up and burning. I rode during the night until two o'clock. I came across the English. I don't know where the hell I was because it was dark. I had no map. I got stopped three times within 200 feet. These uh, British, they had all the trees wired in dynamite ready to blow in case. But I was afraid that they might get trigger happy. Right. So I finally got to the CP. I went down there. Well, I saw it was a blank wall. I said, dark as hell. I said, where the hell is it? But there was a guard there. I couldn't even see him. It was so dark. He says, Thanks be recognized, very quiet. I says, yes, but keep your fingers off that trigger. He says, who are you looking for? You see me, they're here. He opened the door, shot it because he didn't want to make the light because the inside was all bright, mm -hmm. maps all over the place. I couldn't move, there were so many people in there. I couldn't, what the hell? A lieutenant came by, I tapped him on the shoulder. And he looked, he saw 9th Armored Division. He says, what the hell are you doing here? He says, I'm looking for a map. I want to find ammunition. He says, I wish I could help you. Let's well, see if you can give me a map. He says, we only have maps to go ahead. We don't have maps for the rear. That's a, okay. That's an indication of that, that the I offense was on. I walked out. I got back on my trucks. I said to the guys, we're going to crawl because you're driving black out. You don't know what the hell is ahead of you. Right. I said, the next intersection we come to, we're going to make a left turn. I says, I know going south, we go back to France. But going west, I don't know what the heck is in there because I hadn't seen any maps. So I did that. I turned. We went south, everything's quiet. So I found that code. I said, we stopped to sleep. Right around in the morning, I looked around. I said, okay, I see where the sun come out. I said, let's go, boys. We eating sea rations, that's all we had. Mm -hmm. I kept going. 
ended up in France right on the beach. Wow. And over there, they had orders. Any vehicle looking for ammunition from the front line gets priority. The Red Ball Express, they call it. Okay.